Welcome to part three of our series, Introduction to Surf Fishing. If you missed the first and second parts, you can go back and watch those. Those were posted on YouTube the last few weeks before this one was released, and you can go check those two out. Most of this information is going to be very, very basic. If you're experienced with surf fishing, you may find this information to be very basic. And we kept it that way for those who are just starting out with surf fishing, who want to learn maybe you've done fly fishing or freshwater fishing, inshore fishing, and you really don't know very much about surf fishing, it's completely different. It's totally different. The casting, the baiting, everything is different on the beach. So this is just an introductory course. We're gonna be putting other courses out, but we originally made this course for our private ladies community. And uh, now we feel like we wanna release this information to the public because I talk to people all the time who don't really know anything about surf fishing and they're starting from ground zero. So this is just very basic information for you just getting started into surf fishing. In this last part of the series, we're gonna cover what you should be wearing while you're surf fishing on the beach from head to toe, even things you might not think of ahead of time of what you need to have out on the beach to wear. We're also gonna be talking about how to stay safe on the beach, um, especially for our ladies. Um, this was originally made for our ladies group, but the information is helpful for everyone. And I'm also going to be including a section that wasn't in our original series. I'm going to be talking at the end about a topic that one of our one of our viewers on a previous part had brought to my attention. And I realized, oh, we didn't cover that. And it should be part of this course. So we're going to be talking about that as well. So keep watching. So get ready for lots of information with part three, Introduction to Surf Fishing. So you decide you want to go surf fishing, but what should you wear? There's a lot of different options, and it also depends on the weather, the conditions, how sunny or uh, cloudy it is, and it also depends on the location that you live in. We're going to talk about what you should be wearing, all the way from clothing to footwear to accessories. What type of things do you need when you're going to go surf fishing? And like I've said in other videos, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this right away. You can work up to that. For surf fishing, I typically wear what I run in until it gets too sunny and too hot and I can tell that I'm starting to burn. So I'm going to back up a little bit and show you. I've got like a running shirt, I've got these shorts on, and uh, for me, I just feel like this is modest for me. I know some women like to wear their bathing suits when they're fishing, but if you're an average, typical woman, you don't have like this amazing body. Uh, like. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty average. I don't want to be showing all of this, you know, all of my skin while I'm fishing. For me to feel comfortable and to feel like I'm modest enough, I just typically go with shorts. When my husband's around, I will fish in my bathing suit because, you know, I have really bad tan lines. But if you're worried about tan lines, wear your bathing suit. If you're comfortable in that, um, personally, I end up fishing alone all the time. Not as much anymore now that we started Fishing Girl. Like today, I've got my friend with me. But when I'm out here by myself and um, there are men around, I don't feel comfortable just wearing, going around in my bathing suit. If my husband's here, that's a different story. When it starts getting too warm, I have a, uh, a shirt like this that is, it's UV protected. I'm not gonna put it on because I have a microphone and so it will affect the microphone but it is UV protectant, it's long sleeve, so it's gonna cover you up. I even have one, um, I'm a Salt Strong member, so I've got a Salt Strong shirt. I might be wearing it sometimes in these courses, but it also has a hood, so like if you're worried about your ears burning or something, um, once you've been out here a few hours, it does get toasty, and so you might say, well, <laughs> If you're that hot, why would you put on long sleeves? But honestly, this stuff keeps you cool. If you feel your shoulders burning, you can put this on and then you're not burning anymore. You're feeling okay. I actually can find these pretty inexpensively. If you're in Florida, there's a store called Bell's. Bell's has the, the Real Legends brand. They have a couple of other brands of shirts and you can typically find them for 15, 20 bucks. Even on clearance, I found one as low as like $2 which was crazy. 
try to get something that's UV protectant so that you're taking care of your skin and you're not gonna come home and be miserable for the next few days. For winter time though, you're gonna wanna bundle up because it's gonna be chilly. Even if you're here in Florida as a Floridian, you're gonna be very cold in the winter because you've got also the sea breeze that's coming in. Not only is the temperature cold, but you've got the wind coming in from the ocean and that's gonna really affect how cold you feel. So you'll wanna bring a jacket, something that will cut the wind and the wind won't be able to cut through it. And then I usually like to wear like thicker exercise pants, longer ones when it's colder out because for me, they're comfortable. They have pockets, pockets are a big old thing. Um, not only are pockets great when you're out here, I've got my phone in one. The ones that I have on right now, these shorts, I've got my phone on one side, I've got my keys in the other. If I'm catching sand fleas, I can just throw them in my pocket real quick. Just make sure if you're putting bait in your pockets, there's a couple pro tips. Don't go wading in the water with shrimp or sand fleas or anything in your pocket because there are sharks that come in close and they'll smell that. They will start following you. I have friends that saw it happen to other people and they warn them real quick, get out of the water. You guys got shrimp in your pockets. Those sharks are following you. Don't do that. And also make sure that you take them out before you wash them, <laughs> before you go to put them in the laundry. You definitely don't want to wash your clothes with sand fleas in them. If you're wanting to get a jump start on your surf fishing training, why don't you consider booking a charter with me? Let's come down to the beach, do some fishing. I provide all the equipment and the bait. You just bring what you would bring to have a fun time at the beach. Let's go fishing. So what about footwear when you're out surf fishing? Well, for the most part, I go barefoot, but I'm typically not fishing more than a few hours at a time. And I would say on a high impact beach, that's okay. Usually high impact beaches have softer sand and you're not gonna have as much wear on your feet if you're barefoot. Now, if you do have problems with feet, you might wanna get some water shoes. You might wear some Crocs. I know that if I'm out on a low impact beach, it's typically gonna have very hard packed sand like the one we're on today. We're on a low pack impact beach. This sand is pretty hard packed. I brought a pair of Crocs with me so that if I'm out here for more than a, an hour or so, I can throw those on. They give great support on your feet and you're not gonna be suffering for a few days after you fish. Now let's talk about accessories when you're surf fishing. As you can see, I typically have a hat on and mainly this is so it's gonna shield the sun off of my face. So when talking about hats, there's other type of hats that people wear for fishing. Um, this is gonna shield your face, but it's not gonna necessarily shield your ears the back of your neck. Even if you have a sun hat, it's gonna come out with a wider brim. It, it'll be harder because it's floppy. So in the wind, it's gonna flop around and you won't like that. But anything you can do to shade yourself, to make yourself more comfortable and to protect your skin while you're fishing is gonna be helpful. Another accessory that you're gonna need to have are sunglasses. And I would highly suggest polarized sunglasses because what it's gonna do for you is it's gonna allow you to see into the water. So not only could you possibly even see fish in the water, but you're gonna see the coloration difference in the waves, coloration where the sandbars are, where the trough is. If they're not polarized, you're not gonna see that. So you can probably pick up a pair of polarized sunglasses for around $25 at Walmart, another store, places like that. Um, I know there's higher, you, know, you can pay so much money for sunglasses. I've seen a lot of people do that, but you don't have to. So let's talk about something that should be obvious. But sometimes even I forget to do it, sunblock. So I was out earlier today and filming and I thought, oh, well, I'm here when the sun's coming up. I don't need to put sunblock on yet. I just wanted to get out to the beach. Sometimes when it doesn't look like it's sunny yet or it's cloudy, it's easy to overlook the fact that you need sunblock on to protect your skin. Make sure that you are using sunblock, that you're not going to come home all burned and just be miserable for the next few days. Because especially if you're out all day fishing, you gotta make sure that you're protecting yourself. Here's the topic that one of our viewers had brought to my attention that we did not talk about. They, they brought up licensing and I thought, duh, <laughs> we should be talking about fishing license. And I think at the time when I made this course, it was more like, you know, everyone should have a fishing license. 
but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know, there's a lot more to doing this than just have a fishing license. So here we're gonna talk about fishing license and I'm gonna give you more specific information to Florida. Each state has their own requirements, their own guidelines for fishing license, for freshwater, for saltwater, and everything in between. So the type of fishing license that you're gonna need and how much it costs is really gonna depend on the type of fishing that you're gonna be doing and what type of fish you're gonna be targeting. So the first thing you want to do is to go to your state. Um, here in Florida, it's the, the FWC, the, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. So every state has their own department for handling fishing license. They probably handle hunting license and things like that. We have a separate fishing license for freshwater and then also for saltwater. And then there's other certain uh, additional license that you need if you're going to be targeting, especially if you're gonna be harvesting things like lobster, snook, crabs. If you're going to be targeting tarpon, you have a tarpon tag. All of these things are additional to that saltwater license. Could be extra cost. If you're going to be harvesting sharks, you need to do the shark fishing course. Yeah, it's free, but you still have to go through the course. There are also age requirements. So if you are under 16, you have to have an ID if you're 65 and older. Make sure you have your driver's license or something like that, but proves that you are of an age that you don't need to secure a fishing license. This might seem like it goes without saying, but if you're going to another state to fit and you're gonna be fishing while you're in that other state, for instance, um, a couple, the last few years I've gone to New York for um, graduations and things like that with my family. I had to go to the New York State's website and I had to secure like a one week fishing license. My Florida fishing license doesn't, it's not valid for other states. It's only valid for Florida. If you're gonna be in another state or in another country, you need to look up those regulations, look up those licensing guidelines for the area that you're gonna be in. And I'll just say this too, just be aware that even within certain areas in different states might have different requirements for fish when it comes to like how many you can keep or the, the regulations to keep those fish. If you're only going to be fishing on the beach in Florida, you can actually get a saltwater shoreline fishing license that's free. And it doesn't cost you anything if you're a Florida resident, but you need to have that. You actually still have to go to the site. You still have to sign up for it and print out the document, have it with you, or have it somewhere on your phone that you can bring it up really quickly. Should a game warden come around and ask you to see your fishing license, you need to have it with you. But if there's a chance that you're gonna be fishing someplace that's not land-based, if you might be invited to go fish on a boat or something, then you probably want to go ahead and get that saltwater license. Now, freshwater, they don't have a free freshwater, like land-based fishing license. Just get the saltwater and freshwater combined, then you're good to go. Take that shark fishing course because you never know when you're gonna catch a shark. I catch sharks all the time on my pompano rigs. I put a shark rig out every time and almost like clockwork, I catch them on my pompano rigs. You just never know what you're gonna pull in when you're when you're fishing on the beach. There's so many different species that you can catch. That's what makes it so exciting and fun. You can also get lifetime licenses. I thought this was pretty cool. If you're pretty sure, you know, hey, this is my thing. I'm gonna be doing this forever. It's about $300 to get a lifetime saltwater fishing license. Same with freshwater. It's the same thing, about 300 bucks to get a lifetime license. Could save you money in the long run, especially if you're gonna be like still fishing when you're like 80 and maybe you're 20 something now, you just do the math. It's pretty pretty simple math. You're gonna save a lot of money. For those of you who are not from Florida, you've got, it's a $17 fee for a three day pass. If you're gonna be here, I think it's a little bit more for a week pass. The last thing I wanna talk about here is something that's really cool. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has what they call Catch a Florida Memory Program. And so you can document, you can log your catches in the Florida website and they have prizes and rewards. You've got to actually log it, 
all the information. You've got to have pictures of you with the fish. And then they have to go and they have to review the pictures and make sure that the fish you caught is one of the ones on the, the 70 species life list. There's 70 species and they, they specifically pick fish that you can't catch all in one area. You're gonna have to go offshore for some of these fish. They have lots of fish that you could catch from the beach. There's fish that you can catch inshore that you're not gonna catch other places. There's fish like down in South Florida area that you're probably only gonna catch there. So the whole point is they want to get you outside. They wanna get you in different locations and just trying to have fun and catch fish. It's free to sign up. It's free to log your catches. There's lots of different things that you can get prizes for. It's just a lot of fun. So check that out. One of the things that was hardest for me when I was starting out surf fishing was the fact that I'm a woman and there are restrictions, just natural restrictions because of the fact that I'm a woman. So my first tip for staying safe is to have safety in numbers. If you can find somebody to go with you, uh, let someone know that you're gonna be out there, try to find a buddy to fish with. Here's a few tips that I've learned over the last few years of surf fishing to how I stayed safe. So the first tip is to stay in a public area. You don't know how many times I wanted to go fishing in a spot that somebody told me about. Said, oh, you should fish here. There's all kinds of fish. You're gonna be able to get some really good things there. And it was a very secluded, private area. And I just couldn't go there by myself. So stay in a public area. Uh, I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you see. Got another fellow fisherman over here. There's people walking up and down the beach. Over here, you got several people. There's someone sitting out. There's cars driving by. This is not a secluded area. This is a public area, so find a place. Maybe there's a larger parking lot for beach parking. And so there's gonna be easy access for people to come and be at the beach. You'll wanna be close to there. Now you don't wanna be, you don't want swimmers and surfers right up in your lines. So you still wanna be a little bit away from people because you don't wanna be a bother to them and you don't want to um, you know, destroy their time at the beach either. At the same time, you don't want them taking all your fish, uh, scaring them all away that you want to catch. So you do want to stay away, a little bit away from people, but still stay in a public area. The next tip I have is to have some type of weapon with you. Now, if you have any type of normal tackle bag, you're going to have plenty of opportunities for some type of weapon. First of all, you're going to have a pair of scissors. Those will do in a situation where you need to protect yourself. If you're in a state that allows mace, have some mace with you. I don't know about other states, but um, if you're fishing in Florida and you have a license to uh, carry a gun, then you can bring it with you. And that may detour a lot of people from messing with you if they can see that you're open carrying a gun and you know how to handle it and use it, of course. Another thing that you can use is a fillet knife. If you've got a fillet knife in it, there's times where I have maybe felt a little unsafe because of people around me and I was very close to my fillet knife, just in case something should happen. Nothing did, thank goodness, but I always had that option of using that if I, if I needed to. And so it's very important to have some way to protect yourself if you're out here and you get in a situation where you're not safe. When you're having to wade through water, Especially, this is clean water, so you can kind of see where you're going. But even if it was not very clean like this, you can't reach a good spot from the beach. So we've got to walk this out. We do what we call the stingray shuffle. So we're just going to shuffle our feet as we're walking in. Because the last thing you want to do is to step directly on a stingray you will be hurting quite a bit. To avoid that, just kind of shuffle your feet until it's at a place where, like right about here, I can tell there's no stingrays here. I can see the bottom. You also need to be aware of seasons, when it's open season and when it's closed season. Most of the fish that we catch in the ocean are going to be open most of the time. Um, the really only one that I'm aware of is um, flounder. There is a closed season here in Florida. We have from October 15th all the way through November 30th 
if you catch a flounder, you have got to throw that thing back. I believe that's during the time that they're spawning typically. And so that's to keep their populations healthy. You have to be aware of those things too when you're gonna be fishing from the beach. Thank you so much for watching part three of our series, Introduction to Surf Fishing. I hope that it was helpful for you. And as it was mentioned earlier in the video on our little commercial, if you wanna get a jump start on your surf fishing knowledge and training, uh, I'm telling you this series just kind of skirted uh, basic topics about surf fishing. We didn't get into anything technical at all. Uh, we talked about the types of fish. And there's a few tips in there about how to catch them. If you want to really get a head start on how to catch fish on the beach, consider booking a charter with a professional guide like me because it the, the knowledge here on this video or things that you read online, they're not going to replace actually hands-on training that you're gonna get on the beach with a professional. The feeling of reeling a fish and how to not lose a fish when it's on the line. Being able to tell what the line looks like and the difference between the surf and the wind and also the waves. These are things that you can only learn when you're out there on the beach doing it. Consider booking a charter with us if you're gonna be in the area, Northeast Florida, anywhere from Jacksonville, really all the way down to New Smyrna Beach. We can cover a lot of territory and get you set up on the beach and get you catching fish. And in the future, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and push that like on this video. It helps us a ton. Push that subscribe because we're gonna be putting out more trainings like this, more courses. And I hope you keep watching because I'm so excited about the videos that we're gonna be doing later this year. Thanks again for watching. We appreciate it so much. And as always, tight lines, God bless, and we'll see you. If you're just joining us now, we've got parts one and part two that were... Ah. This is a course that we put together based on a course that we... Nope, that's dumb too. <laughs> and I hope it's helpful. And that didn't sound right. And we're also going to cover things that... Bah, 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 bah. So now we're gonna add the topic that one of our watchers viewers watchers viewers viewers that's what it should be <laughs> okay i'm gonna start that over so what kind of fishing license you're gonna need and what how much it, blah, blah, blah. the last thing i want to mention here is something really cool that the fish in florida florida fish and wildlife blah, blah. okay <laughs>